guys before we really kick start uh, let's let somewhat understand each other you know why don't you guys at least explain me uh, and and tell me you know uh, where exactly uh, you are based out of and uh, you know how many exams you have cleared for acc as of now so well, let's start with devi karni i think there is some problem there guys i am i clearly audible i'm i'm i'm, I'm worried on yes. So yes, we can hear you. Then why am I not getting responses? Pooja, Sakshi, Krishna. Hello, sir. Yeah. I'm from Mumbai, and I completed my economy 2020. Which all exams you have cleared uh, for ACCA, Pooja? As of now. Five papers. Sir. Five papers. Five C level papers. All right. I have completed. get that all right how about you krishna hello sir hi krishna uh, yes sir. Uh, i uh, i actually got nine paper exemption from my college and this and is actually your first exam uh, no i actually attempted a triple a in september i uh, said not september june Uh, so I'm actually waiting for the results right now. All right. Okay. All right. So we have the full house here, you know, and let's just kick start. Uh, let people join uh, as they may go forward, guys. I welcome you to the to the session on SPL. I do have a prep PowerPoint to show you in terms of you know what I have in store today. you know many of you uh, would maybe seeing me for the first time so we'll just kick start with a brief introduction about about the exam and then we'll we'll pick up on you know in terms of on getting on to more details in relation to the exam and then you know i just want to take you through you know how your sessions are going to be so you would you know you have been provided or you would be provided our sessions so what has been or what should be your journey is something you know we should be talking on and what should be your preparation strategy your action plan is something that we'll be trying to address today all right moving on you know this is the slide about myself just wanted to give you a brief introduction i'm a qualified chartered accountant and a cpa from us uh, more than 20 years of experience in various leadership roles including some of the names are like cargill wipro blackrock and boston consulting wherein i have headed the finance of most of these corporations and of course have been heading uh, uh, their finance as a function uh, i have i have been working as the global faculty for ca cpa and acca uh, you know across the world and you would see uh, my cup of coffee now being due you know i would say to to various parts of the world you know at, you know as of now at this point in time now what we will cover today it is more like to give you a perspective in terms of you know how your journey would be the you know you would you may see some slides being duplicated over here that you would have seen in the orientation now this is primarily to uh, to give a uh, benefit of doubt to the folks who are joining us for the first time who has not seen the orientation so i just want to give them a perspective in the first session that how are their uh, you know sessions are going to be looking like and what is this exam you know all about so we'll talk more on that we'll start off with knowing the strategic business leader exam we'll touch upon you know understanding the strategic business leader exam structure and content i do want to spend some time on the exam marking scheme of you know scheme of the sbl exam we'll deep dive into the syllabus areas we'll understand the different ram sessions and then we'll also talk on the revision boot camp and then towards the end i really want to share you your road map to your cp journey of hitting that in the best possible way in the september or the december 23 attempt as the case may be to uh, to really start off our journey you know sbl exam is now a 3 hour 15 minutes exam earlier it used to be 4 hour exam and there is a latest change that has you know that has come up which has led to this that now it is a 3 hour 15 minutes exam effectively 195 minutes my friend to plan read and write so that's again something to to really look for uh, what you get over here is that you would get a pre seen content now in this exam that will be sent to the student which is something very new that that has not been that has not been something that has been happening in past so now what you would get is that prior to the exam you would get Uh, a pre seen that give in relation to the exam question that you would see when you will sit for it 
and we'll we'll talk more in details you know as as we go forward there are three compulsory tasks now and the task may have varying number of parts so effectively there can be 1a 1b 1c that can be 2a 2b and then in the 3a it can be 3a 3b 3c depending upon you know what they really want to you know play around with uh, but the tasks are going to be three of course they can have a sub parts or a or a subsections to to that particular you know question if i really have to talk on the sbl exam as a content my friend you know i'm sure you know some of you who have already given the exam they would understand that one of the big challenge of this exam is to understand the entire question reading the entire question since it is an integrated study you know wherein you would be given some some kind of formats you know, can, that can be a board minutes that can be a spreadsheet that can be an annual report survey proposals etc that will be you know that will be given to you and you have to really comprehend that analyze that and then you know there would be a role that would be given to you in every question that you would deal with he may want you to play a role of an audit manager he may want you to play a role of a consultant he may want you to play a role of a head of a function ceo cfo external consultants and what not so there will be different roles that you'll be playing in the question and that's what you know the story is going to be all about you have to wear the hat of that particular person leader the the profile and then start answering the question and we have practiced a lot on that uh, when you would see our revision boot camp coming to our play because in revision boot camp what we have done is that we have practiced a lot of questions uh, the concept questions the comprehensive questions the exam standard questions and past exam questions too just to give you an insight in terms of you know if this questions come your way what has what has to be your modality of handling that and of course resolving that to the best extent possible so that's again something to be looked upon now if you really talk on the marking scheme of the strategic business leader exam this is the only exam my friend in which you have to write for 80 marks but you are being ranked for 100 marks so effectively what you really need to write in this exam is only for 80 marks but how you write that gives you additional 20 marks that is of professional skills there are five professional skills and you know we have covered that at length in our sessions and the division boot camp you will get to know with that very soon you know i do have a slide that 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 really talks on that uh, we have five professional skills that are to be displayed in the way you are writing the answers to the questions so the way you would write that would give you those marks and that's something you really need to understand and relish and that is something we'll be practicing a lot when we will be doing question together in our revision boot camp guys just to ensure that you know i'm i'm being on the same page guys am i clearly audible just wanted to make sure you know that you guys are hearing me am i clearly audible guys yes sir all right good thank you thanks for that coming on to you know what oh, what i have in store from the standpoint of give me a sec you know what is happening to this all right coming on to you know what i have from the stand of standpoint of marking scheme we have already spoken on that 80 marks for what you write and 24 you know 20 marks for how you write that 80 marks for our technical skills my friend that is for the syllabus area content and 20 marks are for the professional skills as i said there are five professional skills in this exam which we will be capturing in detail the communication skill the commercial acumen skill the analysis skill the skepticism skill and the evaluation skill as we call it the c case uh, we don't have to forget the c case for really scoring good marks in this exam and we have to demonstrate that one thing i can tell you and i'm sure you know folks who have given the exam they would realize that many of the times we know that we have to apply this as a professional skill into the exam but then we don't know how to apply that or how to demonstrate that or what examiner exactly needs in that and that's something we really need to understand that's something we really need to address and that is what we'll be doing when we'll be practicing the revision boot camp together is that clear guys yes sir coming on to you know the strategic business leader syllabus area now we are starting off the journey this is the this is the uh, I would say the the kickstart to the to the journey that you would be having with me in the strategic business leader exam. A to J are the are the syllabus areas that we'll be covering. Effectively, I and J are the are the traits that you need to demonstrate. The syllabus area content is is laying down from A to H, which is which starts off with leadership. We'll move on to the governance piece of it. Then we we'll learn the strategy 
in terms of how to lay down a strategy. We learn in terms of how to really control and you know overcome the risk. We'll understand the technology and data analytics piece. And of course, we'll understand the control and the audit perspective of an organization. And towards the end, we'll talk on you know how the decision making happens, how the financial planning has to happen. And once we have done all of that, we'll talk on some of the latest things that are really happening in the world of uh, uh, corporates, which is like how to innovate, the performance excellence, the change management and whatnot. So this is a very industry oriented content that is there in the strategic business leader as far as the syllabus area is concerned. And that's what we'll be dealing on with. One thing that you would relish, my friend, I'm sure, and I can take proud in saying that the sessions that FinTram really has are very industry oriented. You know, me coming from a very, um, I would say corporate perspective, you know, many of the questions or many of the topics that you would see in your sessions are something that are my real life experiences. So we'll be talking on various industry level perspectives, examples, various industry level discussions that we would have in terms of, you know, what happened in Yahoo, what happened in Google, you know, why Google is Google, what happened in Indigo Airlines and so on and so forth. So various examples that have been picked up. And on the other side, we have also picked up various examples wherein things have not worked well for the organizations. For example, the Enrons of the world, the, the Worldcoms of the world, in terms of, you know, what really happened over there, the Satyams of the world. We have picked up various examples in our sessions to make sure that you're understanding and getting the perspective what a real strategic business leader should have once he really sets for the exam. Because in this exam, one thing is pretty clear, Bita, that he is not going to be asking you on the theory. He is effectively asking you on the application of those theoretical concepts. So the more you would demonstrate your understanding on the, on the practical application of the concepts, the more more marks you would get by right? that we have crafted and drafted ensures the practical understanding of all of these areas. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, moving on, guys, you know, we have, have leadership as the first syllabus area to really capture. Now, leadership is the place wherein you will be learning the quality of the leaders, the professional and the corporate ethics that one a leader, one, you know, the leader needs to demonstrate the culture of an organization, the fraud, bribery, and corruption piece of it. Very imperative and very important for any leader to be the leader of an organization to demonstrate these traits. And that's what we'll be learning when we'll, we'll be starting off as an area to be covered up in our sessions. Important piece is that in the coming week, I would be you know, sharing with you a study plan in a while. In the coming week, we are expected to cover the leadership as a syllabus area because when we'll be catching up later on, we'll be talking on, on to this. And of course, we'll be discussing on in terms of you know, what you have understood and what you should be doing from the leadership standpoint. Then comes the governance, my friend. On the governance side, you really need to learn the corporate governance piece. You No one can be a good strategic business leader unless and until he has a mindset of the governance. You have to understand the directors of an organization, their liabilities, their responsibilities, their authorities. You have to understand the committee for reporting that they want, the reporting that should be happening to them, and so on and so forth. We'll be learning all of this in the governance syllabus areas. Moving on to the strategy. Now you want to be a strategic business leader of an organization. Can you be without having a right to strategy for yourself? Nope, it is not possible. So we'll be learning in terms of, you know, how one should be really framing up the strategy. So we'll be starting off, you know, in terms of, do you really understand what are your pluses and minuses to start with? So you would be doing your internal analysis. You'll be doing your environmental analysis. You'll be doing your capability analysis in terms of you know, what you're really capable of. Then considering that what all kind of choices are, are being available to you from the strategy standpoint, and then thinking about you know, what should be the strategy and then implementing the strategy. So while I say that, you know, in, in like few words, but I can tell you strategy is one of the most important area of the exam. You would always find at least one at times two questions coming up from the strategy area. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Coming on to the risk, my friend. Now, you cannot be a good leader of any organization unless and until you have an eye on the risk. Gone is the time, my friend, wherein we are only exposed to the profits and the losses on the organization. We are exposed to so many risks now if you're really doing the business. So you have to understand you know, how one should be identifying those risks, assessing those risks, how one should be managing those risks to understand, to ensure that you're able to mitigate those risks in the, in the best possible way. So we'll be learning that you know, in terms of you know, how one should be addressing risk. And of course, we have done that with the help of various examples from the market. 
Now, technology and data analytics, can you do a business nowadays? Can you be a good strategic business leader of any organization without having a complete track or a good hang on on the technology? Nope, it is not possible. And that's what the syllabus area also tells us. It effectively prepares you to hit any corporations down the line to make sure that you're able to understand and appreciate what is really happening on that side of the table. So what we'll do is that we'll have an IT uh, we'll have system, you know, security and controls being part of the syllabus areas. We'll talk on the various risks that that are that that technology really brings onto the table, and we'll talk on various modern era technological areas, you know, data analytics, big data, cloud computing, and so on and so forth. We'll be talking on so many things that are really happening in the world right now, which you, being the leader of an organization, should be aware of because you never know if you have to implement that in your exam. Because many of the times, I can see I am I'm yet to see one, you know, even one exam that is not having a question on new technology implementation. Something or the other would examiner would certainly throw at you from the latest technology standpoint. And you have to assess that. Does that hold good for us? Should we be implementing that? Should you, should you not be implementing that? And so on and so forth. And that's what you should be knowing and implementing in the best possible way. Coming on, on, on to the organizational audit and control. Now, this is something you would have already seen. You know, I don't have to explain a lot on that. You really have to have a complete hang of, you know, how the internal controls of an organization should be. We should also have a perspective in terms of, you know, what the audit of an organization is, compliance of an organization is, and how the reportings are happening internally in the organization. We also have a syllabus area that talks on the financial planning and decision making. Now, this is, again, something that I'm sure you would have seen in terms of understanding the trends, understanding the numbers, understanding the ratios, understanding the, the projections, forecasting, because he may give you a proposal in the exam that really talks on that, you know, if this is happening this way and you're acquiring a company, you know, these are the financials, considering those financials, should be you be going ahead or not? So you're effectively making a choice that, you know, considering this, what should be my plan? What should I be doing? How should I be doing that? And so on and so forth. There are various concepts that we'll be learning in this from the financial planning standpoint. But I can tell you the organization control and audit and of course, financial planning and decision making is something that you, I'm sure you would have already seen in any graduation or a post-graduation level courses or a professional level course that you've handled. But what is the mantra that Fintram always follows? Sir, we always follow a mantra that will start from the scratch. Assuming that you don't know that, you don't know anything on that, we'll start from the scratch to give you the complete perspective around it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Coming on to the last piece, that is the innovation and excellence. Now you, you are living in a world, my friend, where if you're not innovating yourself, you're out of the business. And that's what we'll be learning over here. We'll be learning on various disruptions that are happening around the world in the businesses. For example, what is really happening on the Swiggy side of it, Somato side of it, what is really happening on the Zoom side of it, you know, taking an example, all of those things are really needed to be understood from the standpoint of knowing as to what is really happening on the disruption side. We'll be talking on the change management, operational excellence, project management, and whatnot, because this area is full of modern era concepts. It'll really light a bulb in you the way it is being given over here to really tell you that this is something that you really need to be aware of. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, coming on to the professional skills, my friend, you know, while we have done the, you know, syllabus area from A to H, we do have professional skills, as I said, of 20 marks, which is to be displayed in the exam. I've just given a brief perspectives, you know, given brief, uh, I would say over here to tell you as to what those professional skills are. But in detail, what we'll be learning is that we'll be learning how to implement that into the answers that you will be writing in the exam. So we have practiced a lot on that in the revision bootcamp, just to make sure that you completely have a grasp over it. We have a communication professional skill, my friend, wherein you are expected to express yourself very clearly and convincingly. And we learn that when we'll be practicing that with the help of questions. Then we have the commercial acumen, wherein you really need to have the awareness, my friend, in terms of you know what can go wrong in a business, more from the wider business context standpoint, external environment standpoint, and whatnot. So that is something that you need to display when you're writing the questions or answer of those questions. Then comes the analysis, my friend, wherein you have to start making the inquiries, start making the investigations in terms of data points that are being given to you. And of course, you will learn this art in terms of, you know, how one demonstrate that in the answers once you'll go with me and start answering the questions of the exam. We have done various past exam questions also, my friend, into it, just to make sure that we are able to demonstrate to you that if questions come this way, then what you should be doing, what you should be answering. And that is what is going to be the game changer. Many of the times, my friend, student really gets, you know, 
catch on 40, 42, 45, 48, 49 marks. They're not able to make 50 marks primarily because they have not been following the professional skills rightfully and not be following the formats. We'll be coming on to that in a while, but this is something categorically we have covered that in detail in our sessions and of course in our revision boot camp. Coming on to the last uh, syllabus area, it is not effectively a syllabus area, but it tells you that you know you need to know the CV environment because exam is a computer-based exam. So you really need to know you know how exam really works. And we have practiced uh, you know various questions. We also give you a a demonstration on you know how the CV really works. So you really need to know that, and of course ensure that you're able to answer questions in the CV environment. Now, one thing that has come up is that, you know, as, as a change, you know, from September 2023 is that you would get a pre-seen content. But before I really move on there, guys, any questions anyone has before I really just keep going? I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm not losing out on you. Any question anyone has till now? Anybody? Ajira, any question? Anybody? All right. If there is nothing, let's just go and get along on this. Now, this is a change, my friend, that has come up, uh, you know, very recently, you know, wherein now the examiner wants you to have a pre seen content available with you, which will be sent to you two weeks ahead of the exam. And, you know, you would be receiving, you know, an email confirmation when the content is available. Uh, you know, that, yes, this is the pre-seen content, go through that. And, you know, it will be given to you two weeks in advance. So, you know, you can go through that. We can also discuss and, you know, then we can hit the exam in the best possible way. What should you do is that you should advise to read the pre-seen content ahead of the exam. Of course, it goes without saying. You should do some research to better understand the terminologies and the activities of the industries and the organization. We'll, of course, you know, try to do that as next as possible. Discuss and prepare on the pre-seen material. You should, dis you should discuss that with me you know, as much as possible on that pre-seen material. And, of course, complete the all syllabus areas. Just do not overdo with that pre-seen material. That's not going to be helpful. You know that, that this is the industry we're talking about. We'll do some basic research on that. But that is what we're going to be doing. We'll not, we'll not, not be, you know, leaving any such syllabus area undone. What you should not be doing is that you should not do a further research, my friend, you know, whatever is relevant, um, I would say obvious in the preceding material is something that you should be do you know, doing and of course examining, you should not be like, you know, be doing overdue on that, that's not going to be helpful, right, you should not do question spotting, you know, that's not something that you should be thinking about. Uh, which is like, you know, that this if this is a case study, then this question would come. That's not something, right? Uh, we should not be doing rote learning. We'll not be, you know, memorizing that pre-seen material. You know, that would anyway be given to you, you know, in your exam, um, you know, on the, on the side of it, you will always have it. Now, what should be your study plan and, you know, approach to your preparation? Now, that's something you should, you should be knowing and, of course, addressing when you'll hit your exam. The first thing first is, you know, we have provided you the sessions, my friend, of all of the syllabus areas. And, you know, I'll be you know, soon providing you a, a uh, I would say, study plan, which I expect you to follow. And this presentation also will be shared with you, you know, and will be uploaded onto, onto your software just to make sure that you have it. You should start seeing the sessions and the and practice the class question syllabus area wise the way it is being given. Do not do not do session five first and then first. No, you have to follow from first to the you know to the number that we have in the in the in the uh, lms you have to follow the sequence start from the session one and go to session you know let's say 40 50 whatever that number is important is that you're following that sequence read through the professional skills in entirety and practice that we have practiced that a lot my friend in the exam understand the format needed by the exam now on the one side you have to read the formats of the exam on the other side you have to demonstrate and give the formats also in the exam you have to prepare those formats he may ask you to prepare a report. He may ask you to prepare an email. He may ask you to prepare a press release. He may ask you to prepare a memo and so on and so forth. So you have to know all of those formats and we have covered that at length in our sessions. In fact, we have practiced various questions, including the past exam questions, demonstrating you the right formats. Very important. And I can tell you many of the students who have not done well in the exam, but formats is one of the reasons. You should never forget that. 
Acquiring the right reading and the writing skills, practice is going to be the key here. And we have practiced a lot, as I said, in our revision boot camp. We'll be doing question together there. Very important that we understand that. You should much watch, you know, much watch, must watch our video question marathon, wherein we have, as I said, we have practiced the, the concept questions, the comprehensive questions, past exam questions, as well as the exam standard questions. Must for you to really go through that at least twice practiced at least two past exam questions. We have done many in our revision boot camp, but again, you should be practicing two exam questions by your own hand. And of course, give a mock exam. We'll be coming up with a mock exam in the month of August, and you should preferably give two mock exams to me, wherein you would be getting a detailed performance review for the same. Now, coming on to, you know, the study plan that I have for you, you know, I have prepared the study plan for the upcoming September 2023 attempt. Now, how this works is that in the week of 26 June, which is like you know starting coming Monday, what we expect is that in the entire week, you should be able to complete from session one to session four. That effectively covers the leadership. In the week of 3rd of July, which is the week next, you should be doing the governance piece of it. That is session five to 10. And of course, this has been structured, my friend, keeping in mind that, you know, considering the time frame, would, be, would you be able to do that? And if, and just to work backwards, if you're able to devote two hours a day, you know, what I'm giving you as a plan is completely achievable. So if you're able to demonstrate two hours a day to me in a week, this plan works for you. Week of 10th of July, I want you to cover session 11 to 15th, which is nothing but the strategy. Week of 17th July, I want you to cover 16th and 17th session, which is strategy and session number 18 to 20, which is, which is risk. Week of 24th July, you should be covering 21st to 23rd of sessions, which is technology. Week of 31st of July is something wherein you'll be covering session number 24 and 25. And one thing that you should be doing is the revision of what you have covered till now. Week of 7th of August, again, you'll be covering finance and financial analysis plus the revision. Week of 14th of August is something wherein you'll be covering project management and other areas. And of course, since this is not that big area, I would want you to keep revising the content that you've covered earlier. Once you have done this, my friend, in the week of 21st August, I want you to kickstart with the revision bootcamp sessions. And you have to have to do that at least two times. Once you're done with that, we'll be coming up with the mock exams. And once you have done with that, you'll hit the exam week, wherein you should be practicing the revision bootcamp and the past exam questions. We will try to meet as regularly as possible on the weekends, be it on a Saturday and Sunday, to really cover up and ask you that, you know, what all queries you have, concerns you have. You would also have my WhatsApp number. So in case you stuck and you, you get stuck anywhere in between, you can, of course, come back to me, send that query to me, and we'll be happily responding back to that as soon as possible. But we'll be keep coming on the weekends as much as possible to really demonstrate the query, query resolution there and at that point in time as much as possible and of course to give you and cover various other areas that we want you to really look forward to we will be also be showing the revision videos towards the end you know we will be doing that uh, that face to face revision together uh, in the week of 28th of august i think in the week of 21st of august we'll start doing the revisions also together wherein we'll do the real time you know revisions with you uh, and of course, you can you can understand, you can ask questions, queries, concerns that you may have, and we'll resolve it there and then. As I said, we will be issuing you this um, study plan, uh, you know, after the call. Uh, you know, this will be uploaded ne by next week, you know, onto your onto your platform, and you can really have a look on that. And of course, you know, once you've cleared the exam, then it's my coffee time. You really have to treat me with a cup of coffee to ensure that you're not missing on to it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, that's pretty much my friend I wanted to cover in this session. I just wanted to kickstart the journey wherein you should now be starting off with the session number one. And of course, going on and taking on the areas together, you know, one by one, one by one basis. You know, we will be covering up and giving a recap of, of the sessions on the weekend, you know, as much as possible. And we'll, we'll connect on that. We'll talk on that. We'll give you, you know, the areas. We may practice some questions also on that. We may talk on a few questions also on the weekends just to make sure that you're getting the complete perspective. I've given the number over here, my friend of Fintram. And of course, my WhatsApp number is also given over here. You can reach out to me in case you have not got my number. You can note it down. You can reach out to me. We'll be happy to chat. And of course, happy to work through as much as possible. 
Now that effectively wraps up my friend, what I really wanted to cover. Any question anybody has, I'm happy to take it up, uh, you know, and, and resolve it there and then. Uh, ha, sir, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, does it uh, make a difference if we are exempted from nine papers for ex SBL exam? Not exactly. I don't think that really makes any difference. Uh, uh, at least for the SBL exam, I don't think so. But one thing, Hajira, you should really know is that SBL exam has a very different way of things being answered in the exam. So you have to learn that art. You have to learn the way you have to read the question, answer the question, demonstrate the format, demonstrate the professional skill, demonstrate the exact requirement, take on the role of what is being given to you and so on and so forth. So you have to learn that. But first nine papers, you know, I don't see if you have not done that would make a hell lot of big difference, uh, you know, for you to clear the exam. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I have cleared it in the math, so I have getting this lot of these like uh, your exempt student, so it makes it up. Study from the right source, uh, Hajira. You know, if the source is right, you know, uh, as I said, you know, the way we we also try to do is that if there is anything that you know that we think that there is a some base requirement needed, then we start from the scratch so as to make sure that you know student is not missing on to anything. But yes, honestly sir. speaking, I don't see you know SBL having a huge uh, issue with you know first nine papers no i don't think so but of course you know uh, you have to start learning the strategy for these that's the must yes, and i'm sure once you will go through a revision boot camp you will realize the fact because once you have solved question over there you would realize that you know oh this was something that i was missing when i answered it this is something that i need to reconsider this is something that i need to demonstrate this is something that i need to follow and so on and so forth so you'll understand that yes sir thank you Anybody else, guys, any confusion, any query, any concern anyone has? Excuse me, sir. What are these uh, pre-seen materials? So what the examiner is doing now is that he would be, let's say he give, you know, he has given you a case um, uh, and th that case is to be taken up and solved in the exam. What he will do is that two weeks before the exam, he will give you some context about that case. He may give you an industry perspective about, you know, what the question will be from. He may give you some, some of some uh, additional information about the case. He may give you some perspective around the case, but not the exact case. Case you would only see in the exam, but the additional information or the, or the, uh, I would say the overarching information around that case would be provided to you in advance so that you're at least aware of what industry you have to deal with what kind of problems you need to really need to look forward to and so on and so forth. So it's again, something, as I said, you know, it's just got changed. So it is a very new thing that will really come your way and you will see that get unfolded, you know, as, as you go forward. But one thing that is good is that, you know, once you will receive the pre-seen material, you know, of course we can talk uh, together and review that together so as to make sure that you know you're getting the right perspective around that uh, and so are you providing courses as well like classes oh yes i have already explained you that you once you'll register you would receive our classes which you would you know which will be available with you and we'll be giving you the plan which you really need to follow and we'll be keep meeting uh, you know on you know on the weekends wherever possible to really talk through and of course understand uh, your queries concerns and resolve that there and then okay thank you sir we provide the uh, sessions we provide the revision boot camp we also provide the uh, the professional skills for maths we also provide the mock exams with the detailed performance review everything is being provided and all i can tell you to sakshi is that you know um, i'm sure you know you would have done your research but um, the way our the course is structured you know has helped students around the world uh, you know getting over with those 50 marks and they have been very successful with the strategic business leader exam and we say proud in, uh, you know in contributing to the journey thank you sir all right. Anybody else, guys? Anyone has a question? Anything that you want me to resolve or help you out with? Krishna, anything you have, buddy? Krishna, are you able to hear me?
Pooja, anything I can help you out with? Sakshi? Guys, you need to talk. So if you'll talk to me, if you'll explain me your issues, if you'll help me understand your issues, I can really help you. If you'll keep silent, it is very difficult to know what is happening at, at your side. Anybody, guys, anything that you have in your mind that you want me to dissolve or help you out with? I'm sorry, I have one more question. Uh, can we complete the entire syllabus within two weeks for SPL? Because I have not possible. Heard, uh... not, poss not possible. Don't 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 really don't really be thinking about doing that. Absolutely not possible. I'm I'm thinking of giving two papers this uh, this September, one AFM and SPL. So wrong choice, uh, Sakshi. Wrong choice. AFM and uh, SBL is a wrong choice together. I'm sorry to say this, but it is a wrong choice. If in case you're thinking of doing two papers, SBL and APM is the paper that you should pick on because many of the content of SBL is common in APM, is there in APM. Actually, I only have these two papers left. So Fair enough. Then do not plan to give it in one attempt. Please don't do that. Okay, sir. Thank don't you, sir. waste your money. Don't waste your money, uh, Sakshi. I have seen many students uh, attempting like that and then finally coming up and giving one exam at a time. So why to waste money and give exam fees for no reason? And it is a huge exam fee, right? It is not cheap. I know. It's huge. In ACCA, what is huge is the exam fee. Everything else is small, right? No point. No point giving. Johan, anything, my friend, I can help you out with? No, sir. Everything is okay. Perfect. All right. Anything else, guys? You know, I just want you guys to open up. The more you'll open up, the more I'll be able to help you up. Krishna, I'm still waiting for you to ask anything if you want. Ishika, Ish Krishna, Rajri, anyone. I'm happy to answer. Guys, it is your time. You know, me taking out time on on the weekends coming to you, you know, is, is, is something to be, to be taken benefit of. So take the maximum benefit of it. Anybody guys, anything I can help you out with? All right. If there is nothing, you know, let's wrap this up. I'll give you back your Saturday. Thank you very much for joining in. Uh, and, you know, as I said, you know, in case, uh, uh, you know, you need any help, you can reach out to me on my WhatsApp number. Happy to help. And of course, take your journey. We'll be seeing you, uh, you know, very soon, you know, when, when the next session is being planned for. Until then, you know, uh, you know, just keep practicing, keep seeing the sessions, and I'm sure you'll rock it out. Thank you very much. Have a good luck. Wish you a very good evening. Pankaj Tingra, signing off.